scientists. We're going to collect data about simple pendulums, and you are each going to collect one data point. We'll put all of those data together so that we uh, see what it means to have a complete data set and see what kind of patterns we can get from analyzing those data. So the first thing to figure out is what a simple pendulum is. And this is a pretty good example, model of such things. It's some kind of mass or bob that's suspended by a string. String is mostly non-massive. All of the stuff or all the mass is in this red yo-yo bob. Uh, and then pendulums swing pretty consistently like so. We're going to study this kind of motion. So this is our ideal simple pendulum, but you might not have a yo-yo walk just around. Um, you might have other things. They're probably right there in front of you. You just don't know it. For example, I found this belt. I kind of looped it around this handle to this water bottle and voila, I've got a relatively massless belt with a heavy water bottle. This is filled with, filled with uh, water and it swings back and forth. Okay. Maybe it'd be better if I used a longer length. We'll talk about that. Okay, so I just made a simple pendulum out of stuff that I literally had lying around. Or we know you have those days, it's 10 minutes before this assignment is due don't let it happen again. You pick up a shoe, find there's a lace, make sure that lace is pulled out so that it doesn't slip. You'll use that as your swingy thing. You use the shoe as the swinging thing. And there you go. Simple-ish pendulum. All kinds of examples. Everywhere you look, you'll find something. Okay, now the question is, what are you going to measure First thing you're going to measure is how long does it take your pendulum to swing back and forth 10 times? So when we say 10 times, the question is how do you count that? In this case, uh, if I say ready, set, go, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So I'm counting how long it takes to go there and back again, a complete cycle or back to where it started. Each time it comes back to where it started, that's one swing, okay? So you'll count 10 of those cycles and time it. This should be some comedy of errors where you're trying to time something with your pulse, stopwatch, or watching the clock in front of you, whatever the case may be, or someone else is timing it for you, or you're videoing it, genius, and then you can go back to the video and find the time from that video. So you should be able to get it pretty precisely that way. The other thing you can do that we'll need is to measure the length of your pendulum. So we need to define that too. This length that we're measuring is from wherever it was pivoted, wherever you were holding the string, to the center of that pendulum bob. So the center of the yo-yo, not just the length of the string, but the middle of the thing that was doing the swinging. Okay, we want a common definition of that because with some things, like this odd object, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here, so I want to kind of estimate where that center of stuff happens to be. So I'm going to measure from here where I might have been holding it, which seems I probably would have, I could have had it much longer, but this is what's fitting in my video screen right here. And I would measure to, you know, <laughs> find a good sticker, sticker of your favorite band, sticker of, oh, there's some yarn here. You know, find some kind of mark there, that's the thing that you're measuring too. So it's in the middle of this thing. If you're doing the shoe, well, yeah, good luck. We'll talk about how important this may or may not be, how our estimate is for the center of the shoe. But I'd measure it to about here, not the lace length, but the, the distance to the shoe to the middle of the shoe, what I would call the center of mass of the shoe, okay? Uh, centimeters, if you would, so that we all have the same kind of measurements. If uh, you don't have a centimeter ruler, we'll figure something out. I'll give you some tips. Um, I'm pretty sure you can, you can figure out something that is a centimeter, create some kind of scale, and figure out what your length is. So keep careful records, 
video might be helpful. Timing, maybe do it a couple times, see if you're getting the same result. Making sure you're counting complete swings, 10 of them, and get that time. You'll only be responsible for one data point. Everyone will contribute those, and we'll see what the teamwork collaboration of all those data points produces for us. You may have some questions about how this is going to turn out. We'll see. Happy science.